This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Just six games across Major League Baseball for tonight. And despite that, I do still feel like there are some pretty fun options for betting. Uh, two money lines I like and two strikeout props as well. Both are unders, which is not as fun, but I still think good edges to be had across the board here. What we'll do for today is break down those bets, outline where I'm seeing value based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook to get you ready to win some money for Monday night. Hopefully, we'll see uh, over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to take a look at tonight's MLB betting slate breakdown, where my numbers are seeing value for today. We'll get to that all here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. Also up over on the FanDuel YouTube page and, of course, as mentioned, on the FanDuel TV Plus app. You can get that on your Amazon Fire TV, at your Apple TV, or on your Roku as well to get us alongside the solo shot, Up and Adams, Run It Back, and all the, the wonderful FanDuel TV shows all over on the FanDuel TV Plus app. So go get that uh, on those platforms or check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page or the number for the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelpline ma.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in New York, one 877 Wire text Open Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, as mentioned for today, we do have two money lines and two strikeout props. I am eyeing over at FanDuel Sportsbooks. So let's dive into those now, starting off with the money lines. The first one is in a game that is questionable if it'll play. Actually, both uh, the money lines are in games questionable to play for tonight. But I do like the Baltimore Orioles, minus 136, taking on the Cincinnati Reds. And this one breaks my heart because I have been on the Reds a lot recently. They have been the best team to me in terms of betting recently. So it is tough to bet against my darlings here for tonight. But I think the market is finally catching up to them and potentially still a bit too low on the Baltimore Orioles, a team that has also been very good to me so far this year. The big reason why I show value in the Orioles here is I'm skeptical of the Red starter, Brandon Williamson. Williamson the results have been okay thus far. They've not been hideous by any means, but his expected ERA is 6.72, thanks in large part to a 47.5% hard hit rate allowed. That is a tough number. So you could look at the opposing side and say Cole Irvin's expected ERA is also around eight or so. Uh, I think it's actually above eight, but Irvin has been getting more strikeouts, letting up less hard contact. So I believe he is more likely to progress as the year goes along then Williamson is based on each guy's respective numbers that stabilize more quickly that's why I lean towards the Orioles here looking at this one the Orioles are a team that hit lefties really well and they're adding up uh prospect Jordan Westberg today Westberg is a guy who had 16 home runs in AAA was willing to steal bases 
not a super low strikeout guy, which means he could struggle for some contact in the majors, but he's been really good. Now you're adding him to a team that does have some key lefties. So I think even though they've been good against lefties so far this year, adding another right-handed bat to this lineup is probably going to be a net positive for them in the long run. So to me, that actually does help a decent amount. Irvin, again, better strikeout rate, better hard hit rate, makes me feel better about his improvement as the year goes along. So my model puts the Orioles win odds above 60%. The implied odds here are 57.6%. So a good little cushion there. The one thing I would say as far as this bet goes is there is a chance the market continues to move towards Cincinnati. If you're watching here on YouTube or FanDuel TV Plus, you can see that a lot of the bets on this game have come on the red side of things. We saw the Orioles, I think they were minus 140 last night, now down to minus 136. And I think they were minus 142 at FanDuel this morning as well. So there has been some movement towards the Reds, again, because they've earned that by how well they played here recently. But I do think the Orioles are the right side of this game right now. So personally, I'm okay taking it right now, minus 136, plugging in the Orioles there because I do show quite a bit of value. But it is worth mentioning this number could move against us. So typically, I get concerned when the market moves against me because it means smart people, people with money, are putting on the money on the opposing side of me. And that's always a concern. You never want really to bet against the market. Here, I'm kind of acknowledging that would likely happen. I think that there is a decent chance that it moves uh, to you get a better number than minus 136 later on. But to me, it's a value regardless. So if you open up your app and see it's minus 130 for the Orioles, I wouldn't view that as a huge red flag. Personally, I think they're the right side of this game. So to me, the Orioles are the right side against the Reds today, taking their money line at minus 136. As mentioned, the second money line for today is also in a game that could potentially be threatened by weather. That is the Brewers at the Mets. And I like the underdog here. I like the Brewers at plus 152 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And how you view this game really depends on whether you believe that Justin Verlander has turned a corner. Because he's had some really impressive starts recently. And a lot of those impressive starts have come at home. He's at home for today and facing a Brewers offense that is struggling still. I just don't think Verlander is quite as good as the results would say in those home games specifically. Verlander's hard hit rate is 44.3% this year. And that's a concerning number even when you're facing a team like the Brewers that is not the world's most powerful team. Even if we zero in on just the home games, so the games where Verlander has looked really good overall this year, his strikeout rate, 22.7%. It is 20.5% overall. So what that tells you is even if we expect a spike in strikeouts at home, he's still going to let up a lot of balls in play. And when your hard hit rate is 44%, that can be a pretty big issue. So Verlander has a 4.50 ERA. I think that is pretty accurate based on the way he's pitched so far this year. His skill interactive ERA is 4.32. His expected ERA is a bit better. Uh, but to me, I feel like the hard hit rate concerns are pretty realistic. So even though the Mets are the, they have the better starting pitching here with uh, Verlander facing Colin Ray, they've got the better offense as well. My model does still put the Brewers win odds at 43.7% versus their implied odds at 39.7%. So the Mets are the better team, even on a new, neutral field, but I don't think the gap is as big as the market implies here. The Brewers defense has been fantastic. That can help make up for some of the issues with the starting pitching. Uh, their bullpen has been just fine this year, whereas in past years, it's been elite. So to me, I think the market is a bit overvaluing the Mets here. So to me, I do like the Brewers plus 152. I think that that money line is a good value for today. So I will take that. The two money lines for today at FanDuel Sportsbook that I do like are going to be the Orioles money line minus 136 and the Mets money line or the Brewers money line at plus 152. As far as strikeout props go, I like a couple, and both of them happen to be in the same game. Now, we talk a lot about this a lot, where I'm not huge into my, my criteria for betting a same game parlay is I need each leg individually to be profitable, and I want there to be some sort of tie-in where they're at least not working against each other. And taking two strikeout unders, there's really no tie there unless I expect it to be like a super high scoring game. Maybe that's the case in Texas for the Rangers and Tigers. But to me, that's not really why I'm here. So I want to take both these bets individually and take Matt Boyd under five and a half strikeouts minus 128 and Andrew Heaney under six and a half strikeouts at minus 112. 
Let's talk about the Boyd half here first. Boyd has gone over this number in three of his past four starts and four of his past six starts. So that may make you unwilling to lay minus 128 on an under going against what he's done here recently. But this matchup stinks against the Rangers. The Rangers have a 136 WRC plus against lefties. They strike out just 20% of the time. So they're a low strikeout offense that punishes lefties. When they face Boyd in Detroit back on May 29th, they drew four walks in that game. They scored five runs in six innings, and Boyd went under by a half strikeout. So in that game, they did very well against him. That was in Detroit. Now they get to see him again, this time in Arlington. Those factors all do lead me to think they could potentially have sec- success here once again. Boyd, pitch count also has not been super big. He's failed to hit 90 pitches in all but one of his past nine starts. So to me, that means Boyd has two paths under. The first one is pitch count, where he doesn't get a huge leash again and doesn't go super deep in the game. Second one is the Rangers knock him around and chase him early. Both those, I think, are advantageous for us. So to me, two paths to an under, I think that's enough where I can lay minus 128, despite the fact Boyd has been going over this number pretty regularly here recently. So Matt Boyd, under five and a half strikeouts, minus 128, the first one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, on the opposing side, Andrew Heaney's strikeout prop is six and a half, minus 112 on the under, and I want that one as well. And Heaney, I think in the past, we'd be looking at six and a half and being like, we'd be drooling because he's always been a high strikeout guy. It seems like Heaney's changed his approach this year, potentially because he realized that the high strikeout approach was not working, letting up way too much hard contact, way too many home runs, and it made it where it wasn't really a tenable approach anymore. So he's made some shifts and been more of a low strikeout guy this year. We have seen Heaney go back more towards his slider recently across his past seven starts. But even in the seven starts specifically, Heaney's strikeout rate is 24.5%. That is an okay number, definitely, but it's not going to get you to over six and a half strikeouts super, super often. The Tigers are not a good offense against lefties by any means, uh, but they're also much better against lefties than they are against righties. And they're also a low strikeout team. They've got a 21% strikeout rate against lefties on the current active roster. Heaney has failed to hit the over here in six consecutive games. He's gone over six and a half strikeouts in just three out of 14 overall this year. So to me, this says this number is based on historic Heaney versus current day Heaney, who is tailoring his approach to be a bit less chaotic, which has been beneficial for the most part. So I'd expect that approach to continue. So to me, taking the under on six and a half strikeouts, I think is the right way to play this one. So I'm going to take both unders here. Again, going with them individually versus tying them together because there's no real tie between the two of them, especially with the roof closed in Arlington for tonight, given there's rain in the area. So I think to me, you bet you place them individually, hope both of them wind up hitting, but um I think it's a, a definitely a night where I want to place this individually as opposed to tying them together. So strikeout props, Matt Boyd under five and a half minus 128, Andrew Heaney under six and a half minus 112 to go with the money lines uh, with the Brewers plus 152 and the Orioles at minus 136. That's all that we have here as far as the actual recommended bets for today. But we do got to go back through last week and recap the recommendations here from last week on the show. Starting things off with some golf. Brandon Gadula was on to talk the Travelers Championship, and Brandon had a good week once again. Keegan Bradley was the winner in pretty dominant fashion. And Bradley was not one of Brandon's outrights. He had Con Morikawa 25 to 1, Tony Fino 35 to 1, and Sung JM 50 to 1. But. Brandon did have Keegan in a group bet. Keegan Bradley was 200 or plus 200 against uh, Gary Woodland, Austin Eckroat, and Ludwig Aberg. And Eckroat played pretty well at times, uh, but Keegan was on and he won this event. 200, not as going to be going to be as good as a, an outright, obviously, but still a good payout uh, for a group bet. So good call by Brandon there. Also won another group bet. That was Ricky Fowler at plus 240 over Matt Fitzpatrick, Wyndham Clark, and Siwoo Kim. Fowler finished 13th in this one. Other group bet was Tom Kim plus 220. That would not hit. But hitting Fowler plus 240, Bradley at plus 200, both those pretty good. And Brandon was also on Brian Harmon, top 20, at plus 320. And Harmon actually finished tied for second. So comfortable. Easy win there, and another great week overall by Brandon. I think that it's not just the fact that the bets won, but also he was on the right guys. Guys have showed a lot of upside for this week. So 
You know, it wasn't a, a Harmon top five. It was not uh, a Bradley outright. It was not the highest upside markets we could have gotten, but he was on those guys. They flashed that upside. I think that means the process was correct. So good calls by Brandon on all those. Hopefully you were able to uh, follow along with him there and uh, get in those on your se- uh, uh, yourself as well. As far as NASCAR goes, I had um, I had like a close week in a lot of regards, but a frustrating week where we were just away from having a really nice week. The one bet for cup was not close. That was Ryan Blaney, 10 to one to win. Blaney was fine during the race. I think that he had like an eighth place car or so, which is okay. You know, maybe if there were a lot of chaos, he could have benefited, but that was not the kind of race we had. Uh, Blaney though, got put in the back on a restart after there was a caution in the middle of green flag pit stops. And there was a pile up in front of him. He got punted uh, from behind. No one's fault. Just kind of a stack up on a restart. Hit the whole wall really hard. Uh, I was kind of worried he might be banged up, but he talked to the reporters after the race. So looks like he's okay. But obviously, no win there at Blaney, 10 to 1. As far as the truck series go, I had three top five bets there. The first was Grant Enfinger, top five, plus 150. Chase Purdy, plus 650. Jake Garcia, plus 750. Both Purdy and Garcia shortened a lot. Purdy closed at plus 550 from 650 and Garcia plus 575 pr- from plus 750. And Purdy did come close. He finished sixth. So uh, one spot out. Enfinger mediocre the entire race. Garcia ran the back half of the top 10. So close on Purdy at plus 650, but couldn't quite get one more spot up. Uh, so no cash in that one. In the Xfinity series, the top five bets were Austin Hill at plus 150, Chandler Smith at plus 350, and Daniel Hemrick at plus 70, 750. The Hill one cash, so that's good. Uh, plus 150, we'll take that for sure. Hendrick finished eighth, no dice there. Was running top five at one point, but, you know, just kind of Daniel Hemrick kind of night. Uh, but Chandler Smith was fast in practice, qualified second, and he closed, I believe, at plus 225 for a top five, down from plus 350. I actually showed value on him or on uh, Chandler Smith to win, so I'd taken him at 28 to one and 18 to one. And he was running out front for a lot of this race. He led 74 laps fighting for the lead with his teammate, AJ Allmendinger late, but Smith spun in a late restart and overtime pushed him way back. So he finished 12th, but I think it was a good handicap on Chandler Smith. I was happy to get the, the Hill cash, but I feel like the thought process of being high on Smith, given that he, I think Collard, Collard was a bit undervalued, which proved to be true with his teammate winning. Um, I think the thought process of Smith running well on concrete in the truck series panned out as well. So again, I like the process with him didn't quite pan out. So frustrating week could have been a lot better, but still feel okay about the, the way the reasoning behind the bets, uh, even if the results were not quite there, hopefully uh, Brandon's bets and golf made up for the ones in NASCAR from me. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. If you want some daily fantasy talk, we'll have that over on the solo shot later on today. That's on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed later on this week, talking to Brandon Gadula to talk about some golf. We'll have some more baseball talk coming up. Uh, F1 is back this week as well, along with NASCAR in Chicago at the street course. So plenty of good stuff coming. Make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread on the covering the spread podcast feed or the FanDuel YouTube page or your FanDuel TV plus app. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also uh, follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across MLB for tonight. And we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk some golf with Brandon Gadula. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 